every other day, it seems like I, I read an article about Trump signing some some, uh, you know, thing into law, basically, or, you know, some sort of deregulation. A lot of it, it seems to be with the EPA um, under Scott Pruitt, deregulating a lot of the uh, environmental regulations that we have had up to this point. Um, it seems to be the trend. At, and I know this may be temporary. And I know that we may only have Trump for another few years. Unfortunately, maybe longer than that. We'll see. Um, but the trend seems to be that currently are in the in Washington, that there's a lot of deregulation going on regarding environmental policies. Uh, I don't know if you had a few comments on that or if you see that as a temporary thing that we can remedy or is this something we should really be concerned about? Well, we should be concerned about Mm -hmm. it, but at the same time, uh, we have a federal system and even before Trump, um, you know, uh, most environmental laws are delegated to states and governments that implement Mm -hmm. them. Uh, EPA itself is a tiny agency. In fact, people don't realize it. It lost 1,500 people under Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it hasn't grown in a very long time. And uh, most of its authorities are delegated to the state. So where the state's serious about environmental protection, I'd say about 20 of the 50 states are really serious. this won't have any impact at all. Um, the other thing I would say is that it takes a long time to change a regulation or even to issue a regulation. So in 1976, we passed the, what was called the RICRA, the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, which regulated hazardous waste. The, regulation, the final regulations under that 76 Act weren't issued until 1993. The back and forth between industry and the government and the iterations, but it took a long time to put that regulation in place. Taking regulations out will take a long time also, and a lot of states aren't going to do it. They're going to continue to be pretty serious about this because their public wants it. Uh, I think what is not understood by particularly Pruitt and, and, the, and some of the folks in Washington is that uh, America supports environmental protection. They don't want an intrusive, overbearing government. But, you know, on the other hand, uh, when it comes to air and water pollution, if it's, if the air pollution in, in my backyard is coming from the next state, you know, and that next state isn't doing anything, I want EPA to do something about it. And, uh, you know, even though they're, they're trying to weaken the regulations, the structure of the law is still in place. And uh, those laws are pretty, uh, pretty serious. And uh, it's not clear that some of these deregulations hold up after the courts get hold of them because the laws themselves are, are, are not being changed because they know that they couldn't get it through the Congress. Uh, if you look at polling data, support for environmental protection, I mean, if you, I mean climate change is a little bit different because people don't understand it, but you talk about water and air pollution and toxics, Support for environmental protection is well over 75%, no matter what your political background is, uh, in part because everybody likes to breathe. It's just one of those <laughs> things we've learned, learned to enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, and people don't want their children uh, to be playing in a, in a toxic uh, backyard or to be for drinking water with lead in it that affects their brain development. So I, I think that what's going on in Washington is unfortunate. Uh, and it represents a kind of backward thinking that uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, this idea that somehow regulation inhibits uh, economic growth is simply factually incorrect. Uh, re- reasonable regulation actually helps modernize industry and uh, helps bring about uh, technological change. I mean, automobiles are probably the best example. Uh, automobiles are, are fairly heavily regulated in terms of safety and pollution. Uh, but what it did is it made uh, Detroit and the auto business hire a lot of engineers. And those engineers, when they finished working on the pollution stuff, they started working on, uh, you know, the uh, essentially the automation of your car. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's all sorts of electronics in a in a motor vehicle today that that have replaced mechanical parts that were there 20 years ago all that and the cars are lighter and they're more fuel efficient all that came about because we put because the regulation forced these companies to to modernize what they were building and uh you know safety is probably the best example 
Uh, Ralph Nader writes this book in the 1950s about cars, unsafe at any speed. And the auto business said, you're going to put us out of business by making us put seatbelts in. <laughs> uh, now a family goes to buy a car. They want to know how safe it is, and they'll pay more money for it. They want airbags and structural steel and seatbelts that work. And, you know, they're, 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 they're spending a fortune on child seats that uh, protect their children. So this idea that all regulation is bad and it's, it doesn't uh, help economic growth, you know, somebody's got to make those airbags. Somebody's got to make those seatbelts. You know, those are jobs. Yeah. And people are willing to pay for that. People are willing to pay a little bit more for a car if it's safer. Although, interestingly, even the cars, if you control for inflation, uh, today's automobiles are no more expensive than they were 20 years ago. It's just that they, and they have a lot, they're, they're a lot better uh, technologically. Mm. 